Hey everyone, it's Matt Carl at Leroy Heritage Museum, and welcome back for another walkthrough of a different part of the hotel project and a little update about what's been going on. We are in the ballroom today, so we're going to talk about some things that we have done in the ballroom, some things remaining to be done, and uh, just what's going on in this particular room. So the major project that had to be done in this room, I alluded to in the last renovation video, and that was fixing the hole in the floor, which is right next to me. And uh, as you can see, that's all finished, and uh, new hardwood uh, is in place there. But if you remember in the last video, I explained what took place here. This is where the stairway came up from downstairs that had been added four years after the building was built. Um, when the store ran out of room four years after it was built, uh, they needed to add another department to the store in this end of the building. So they turned what had been built to be the ballroom, they turned it into a storeroom and built a stairway so you could come upstairs and uh, shop for more items up here. So that left a gaping hole in the floor, which was then filled in in the uh, later years, but uh, it was not done with good flooring. So we went ahead and tore all of that out. And as you saw in the last video, we filled it in with floor joists, put a large laminated beam in place, and then put down plywood, and then got it to this point, which is unfinished hardwood flooring. We made it level with the existing floor that's here so that we can refinish the floor and hopefully, uh, at least in color, be able to blend it all together. So we had a, a choice when we were doing this part of the project to decide how to handle this uh, filling in this part of the floor because the original floor uh, is made up of tongue and groove wood, however, the original floor is varying widths, which kind of makes it a nightmare. So not only would you have to reproduce uh, one size of tongue and groove hardwood flooring, you have to reproduce multiple different sizes just to fit this one spot. So something about that just didn't make sense. And so rather than do that, uh, instead we decided to put a band around this area, which you can see down below. And this runs along the floor. And then it's filled in with all the same size hardwood running all the same direction. So it doesn't line up with the existing floor out in the rest of the room. But hopefully when it's refinished and stained, everything will uh, blend together. And we know that you'll still be able to, to tell that something went on here. And that is fine with me um, for museum-wise because we can put a um, sign in place explaining the history of the building and why this, why this was here in the first place. So um, for what we had to work with, I think it turned out really well. And then a lot of baseboard had been missing, had been torn off in the past, and so uh, we found enough to put it back. Of course, there's a lot of touch-up in stain and refinishing that needs to be done, but um, a lot of the things are back in place that, that were missing, so we're happy about that. There's a few things that need to be done a little bit later, but weren't priority now. A few pieces of flooring that need to be fixed along the wall here. The other major thing was that we had put a doorway in a fire escape that was required by code in this corner and uh, this goes out to the bridge that we built. As you can see here. And so when we uh, bring things from um, the other museum as we have been doing over the winter time. Um, you can see we have several things 
stored in here right now, and we've been uh, moving um, boxfuls of things from the other museum and also other larger uh, furniture pieces that we brought in that will be going into exhibits have been going into this room. And so what happens is that we're able to drive right up, back right up along the back uh, here, and then load right onto the ramp that comes in the back. So that's the purpose of the ramp. I think I've explained in other videos, it's not a handicapped ramp. It wasn't in, intended to be a handicapped ramp. It's meant to be a fire escape, which is what it, which is uh, the reason we build it for code, but we also made it so that we could load things into the second floor without having to build an elevator. And so that is the purpose of it, and it works very well for that. So when that door was put in, uh, the, the trim was not done at that time. We had some more work to do. We had some wiring we had to get in around the door. And then uh, we were able to salvage some woodwork from other places in the building in order to use it here. So it needs a little bit of touch up, and, and, uh, but it is back in place and looks as if it was always there. So that's what we were going for. And of course, every door in here has about 10 pieces of molding that goes around the door um, between the main pieces, the corner rosettes, the uh, quarter round that goes around everything else. So it's kind of a nightmare in order to, to put uh, a new door in because you have to make it match the others. And it's kind of hard to do, but they really did a good job. Um, fix up the door threshold there to make everything code compliant, put everything back in place. And so we're happy about that. Um, in the meantime, while that was going on, we had put in a, um, a box and ran electrical for emergency and exit lighting inside and outside of this door. We also had the fire system installed. So here we have the, the um, pole station for the fire alarm system for the ballroom. And then in the ceiling, the smoke detector is in this room. So uh, this room is all set up just like the, the downstairs room I showed you in the last video. And that pretty much took care of what was done during the recent renovation uh, in this room. So a lot of what has to be done next is uh, refinishing. And so what we've been doing today over here is I've been working on pulling off the plaster in this one corner. We're not pulling the plaster off the entire room, uh, but this corner, the roof had leaked back in the 80s and 90s. And um, before the roof got fixed, uh, it leaked considerably into here. And the part that of the plaster that's been torn off now is uh, the part that was the worst. It was separated from the wall. We're not taking it all off. All of the other plaster in the room is very solid, and this would have been had the roof not leaked. But um, what we're going to do is uh, trim this up fit drywall back in into there as we have done in some other rooms already and uh, uh, do a really good spackle job and uh, put it all back together. A lot of the plaster just has the hairline cracks as any old plaster job does. Uh, I'm not concerned about that. It's not falling off the wall. It's just the usual um, cracks. They're not uh, large cracks and the plaster is solid. So we're getting that done so that when we get ready for drywall, whenever the pandemic comes to an end, um, we'll be able to get right on the drywall. And uh, it's ready to go in other parts of the building once we have some inspections done. And so this will be ready to go as well. But as you can see, when the roof leaked, it really caused damage, not just to the plaster, but also the woodwork in this 
part of the building. Uh, a lot of the discoloration on the wall is just, just that. It's just staining, but it didn't affect the plaster. And then down below, you can see the difference in uh, where it was water stained in comparison to uh, where it wasn't. So it was kind of unfortunate that that took place. But we think we can get that stained back to uh, a similar color and be able to get it at least back so that it's not as noticeable as it is now. Of course, we'll have things in this room, exhibits and things uh, going on that will cover parts of the wall, but we're trying to get at least uh, things back to look halfway decent before we um, finish the room. So this corner has been something that we haven't gotten to uh, up until now, and so you haven't seen much of this, but I wanted to show you what we've been doing in this part. There really isn't a lot of other damage in the room as far as the plaster goes. There will be a little bit up in that corner. Up along the front here, it had leaked a few times but not caused plaster damage. It's just, just water stained. Um, this is along the front where we had the wood shingles replaced on the outside um, last year, last spring. That uh, overhang there over the front of the ballroom had been leaking in the past, so we were able to get that uh, stopped. Um, and also the final part that needs some attention is over the middle window here on the west side. And that is again because the wood shingle decoration over top of that side of the ballroom uh, had been leaking for a while and was running in and running down the wall as well as a window in the attic that had not been properly sealed was sending water uh, under the window and dripping down into the ceiling and running down the wall. So these are things that were done before we got here but we've taken care of them now and stopped them. We just have to fix the problems that that were caused by that. So again the plaster is pretty good in this room in most of the other places that we're talking about just some minor cracks here and there but uh, certainly not enough that we're going to worry about tearing out the plaster in here uh, this room is not insulated except for the ceiling the ceiling had foam placed into it before but the walls um, are not insulated at some point in the future, we'd like to insulate it, um, but it's not an absolute priority right now. We'd like to get this building done and get it open, and then at some point in the future, we'll come back. Um, there's options available today that were not in the past as far as inserting foam into walls that are closed up and doing things of that nature. So that's what we're kind of hoping to do. And... Um, it doesn't require us to have to do it now, is the point of that. In the back of the room, we do plan on installing wall-mounted heating and cooling units. And so that is something we do have to get done before the uh, building opens to the public. Because this is a, a large assembly type room, we have to have a, a, an HVAC kind of system to turn the air over. So. Uh, we will be doing that in the back here as soon as we find money to do that. So that's uh, really the main things that we have left to do in here. Of course, refinishing the floor has to be done, and then um, we'll, we'll be pretty much set in here as far as what we're going to do, obviously repainting the walls. But the ceiling, we won't be touching other than the minor restaining up in the corner there where it got damaged. The ceiling, remarkably enough, is in fantastic condition and fortunately was never touched with a paintbrush over the years. And um, that, was, that was a great thing. We may change the lights that are in here. Those aren't original. Those are put in within the last 10 to 15 years. 
but for now it's we're using them as they are and ceiling fans were put in prior to us coming here uh, but for now they seem to do well although one of them has never worked since we've been here and it is that one right there as far as the fan actually turning it needs some parts replaced so we do have that and uh, they do light up for whatever that's worth they do make uh, a little bit of light in the center of the room but it's really pretty dark in here even with all these lights on so we, that's why we will likely replace these lights in the future with something that lights up the room a little bit better than this particularly since we would be using this for exhibits and uh, programs and things um, we want it to to be easily lit in here so that people can see what's going on so that's a pretty good overview of what's going on in here over here along the the side door I didn't mention that uh, we have an exit sign and emergency light has to go in there and also the siren and strobe for fire is there as well to alert this room should there ever be a fire in here the uh, chimney stays in place there's a liner in the chimney uh, that we have put in since we've been here uh, the problem however has been that the chimney leaks after the roof was put on prior to us getting here and uh, has caused damage in this corner so we have to address that issue um, but other than that um, it's a, just a lot of refinishing of the wood and repainting in this room is what will be necessary to get this room underway the the uh, windows were already replaced before we got here and so that's something we don't have to worry about so some of the things that we have sitting in here right now I mentioned these things are all planned to go into exhibits or be used here in the ballroom or other places around the building but just uh, some a look here at some of the things that we have sitting currently this uh, bed here along with a mirrored piece over here and then there's a third piece that goes with it that bed belonged to Wesley Mott Wesley and Alma Mott came out of their house went then to Red Holcomb's house uh, right across the street from us and then was purchased by the previous owners of this house brought over here and we acquired it from them so that will be in the exhibits and we're glad that that will be available um, for viewing in the future there's another bed back by the wall and that particular one was purchased at Collins and Stoll store in over 100 120 years ago probably and then there's another a bed behind that that came from a cottage at Minnequa Springs and there's a lot of different furniture that we have acquired from different uh, places that we will use and some things need to be reupholstered particularly these chairs right in the back here um, they're Victorian chairs they came out of a house right here in town right in Leroy um, they're from the Victorian period but they were left out in a shed for many years and the upholstery got ruined so we've had estimates done on that and it's around in the neighborhood of $750 a chair to have them restored back to the way that they originally were so that's of course on the burner back burner right now um, some other um, original things here there's some chairs that are from Lakewind there's some other chairs here from the the Morse family a spinning wheel from the Morse family and uh, other Victorian furniture that we've 
uh, acquired to use at different places in the building. So we have those things all ready to be used whenever we move in into this place, which we hope will be next year. So that's that's an overview of what's been going on here with the ballroom. Next time we'll look at another place in the um, in the building and talk about the changes that have been made in that location as well. So thank you for joining me today to take a look at the ballroom.